Okay. Third time's the charm. This is the um, beginner tutorial when you first go in game on Dual Universe. Now I've got to restart this. So I'm going to click on this button here to start the actual tu to the tutorial itself. Welcome to Alioth, Novian. I am Ophelia, the Archship AI. I will assist you in your first steps, seeing as you just woke up from an extended cryosleep period. Keep an eye on the chat window in the lower left part of the screen. It contains a transcript of what I say, with important information about which keys to press. There is a button, near the window, that you can use at any time to replay this tutorial in the future. I have marked it with a green waypoint. You can also abort the tutorial by pressing the abort key at any time, but this is not recommended. You have much to learn after your long cryo sleep. To start with, let's make sure your motor skills are not affected. Simply head towards the green waypoint behind the stairs, using the movement keys. Let's run. Shift and W. Very good. Oh, now, yeah. let's try the jump action. Space. You are in perfect shape. Great. Thank you. Let's try your headlight, which is very useful in dark areas. Press the headlight key twice to turn it on and off. L. Now, take your time to look at the world around you through the glass panes. This gigantic planet is all yours to conquer, as well as the many other planets in the system. You are free to shape the world as you see fit. Build an empire, explore the vastness of space, create a trade federation or a pirate alliance, or live secluded on a forgotten moon. There are no rules here, except for the one you make for yourself. When you are ready, follow the waypoint and look through the marked window. Okay. The buildings in front of you are one of the many district areas of Alioth. Districts contain all the facilities that you will need to begin your journey. In particular, they host institutes where various tutorials are located. We will get back to that later. Now, it's time to go and start preparing for your journey. Head downstairs and follow the waypoint. Okie dokie. Continue down and get close to the screen, marked with the green waypoint. Where are you? Down there. Let's begin by looking at your tools. Tools are located at the bottom of the screen in the form of quick access slots. You can select them with the quick access keys. As you can see, the last slot is currently empty. We will now learn how to equip a new tool in that place. Approach the highlighted tool dispenser unit next to you. Inventory. It's just I've done this already. Let's just get rid of that and continue. She's supposed to continue. Dispensers are elements, which are objects you can deploy in the world. For example, chairs, windows, plants, or doors are all elements. Some elements, like this dispenser, can be activated by pressing the activate key while pointing at them. Activate the dispenser now. F. Very good. The dispenser just gave you a new tool that is now stored inside your inventory. The inventory contains everything you can carry around with you. Let's open it by pressing the inventory key. I? The inventory is a central interface for managing everything you carry around with you. It contains items like tools, materials, elements or blueprints. We will look into it in more detail through the various specialized tutorials. For now, locate the repair tool that was just given to you, and simply drag and drop it into the free slot below. Now that's the repair tool. It needs to be dropped into the uh, 
free slot. It's, I've already done this, just the recording that I made, it went wrong. So I've got all the materials, everything that this is everything you get from this, this uh, beginner tutorial. Essential tools and uh, blueprints and materials to make the uh, her, um, races and speeder. Okay, so let's just drag that to there. Well done. Thank Note you. The now simply Oops. close the inventory by pressing the close. Okay. Okey we are now ready to continue downstairs. This time, we will need to use an elevator. Oh, Move okay. to the designated waypoint. Designated waypoint. Elevators are connected together via up and down links. Stepping onto an elevator and pressing the crouch key or the jump key will allow you to transfer to the next or previous elevator in the chain. Simply... Done. Welcome to the main room. You can get back any time by stepping on the same elevator and pressing the jump key to go up. Space. We. In front of you is a miniature see reproduction down. of the Ark ship. You can perhaps see the real Ark ship through the windows in the distance. Let's try to also find it on the map. To open the map, press the map key. Map key is... Oh, it's F4. This is Alioth, the planet on which you currently stand. Each of these tiles is a territory you can claim. Tiles in red are already claimed. Tiles in purple are non-claimable, and grief. mostly exist around the Ark ship. The Ark ship is represented by a small icon in the center of the purple tiles area. At any time, you can center onto your position on the map by pressing the center icon on the top left. Try it now. Okay, I'll spin this around and do... You can right. also mark any place on the surface of the planet to create a waypoint. Waypoints are displayed in your HUD so that they are easy to track. To set a waypoint, simply right-click on a point on the map and select Set as Destination. Right-click, Set as Destination. Very good. There are still many areas on the map that you will learn to use over time. For example, the selector area here allows you to list your constructs, review bookmarks, and see any available warp beacons or other points of interest. In the lower right corner, you can find the list of current objectives in a tutorial, usually with hints on how to achieve them. For now, let's just close the map. Press the upper right close button. You can see, you can see there a hell of a lot of claimed places here. <laughs> it's probably not worth uh, setting up here at all. Good grief, there's loads. No wonder there's a uh, lag here. I mean, it's playable, but uh, it would be a bit annoying to stay here and continue here. Anyway, let's, let's continue. You may have seen on the map that certain territory tiles are claimed. To claim a tile, you must deploy a territory unit on the ground. Let's have a look at one. Follow the waypoint. Okay. Which way? Is it is it down? Oh, I've gone blind. Oh, there it is. <laughs> As you can see, it's quite huge. Once Ooh, uh. a territory unit is deployed onto a tile, this tile belongs to you. It means you can start to build constructs on it. You can decide who holds rights to dig the ground and whom else can also build next to you. Territory units are quite expensive and will probably not be the first thing you deploy on Alioth. Instead, we have a much better way to let you grab a piece of land. Let's discover this now. Follow the waypoint behind you to the elevator on the end of the room and move up. This will take us to the observatory. Yeah, okay, so we've got to go up into there. Go on. Doesn't matter which one. As long as you're on one of these. Welcome to the observatory. From here, you should be able to see Alioth's moons in the sky. One of them is a very special moon, called the Sanctuary Moon. 
We will explain what that means, but first, let's try to locate it. Let's open the map again by pressing the map key. F4. The map also contains a solar system view. Click on the system tab to open it. Here you can see all the planets currently accessible in the system. Select Alioth, the planet where you currently are. As you can see, Alioth has three moons. One of them looks a bit like a twin of Alioth and is marked with a small shield icon. This is the Sanctuary Twin Moon, or the Twin for short. Select it by clicking on it. Excellent. Now, let's click the Set Destination button. Good. Now, before we leave, let's have a look at the surface of this moon, and find out why it's called the Sanctuary. Click this Twin Moon, just like Alioth or any other planet, is also covered with tiles that you can claim. A Sanctuary um, Moon is a moon where no combat will ever occur, as it is a safe zone. This means that every territory you claim will remain yours forever, and nobody can take your belongings or build anything there without your consent. This is a great way to create a safe haven to store your valuables and build your home. Getting to a sanctuary moon and claim a tile should be your first goal in Dual Universe. First goal is not you to go can there. Claim only one tile on a sanctuary moon, and you will need a special sanctuary territory unit for that purpose. Let's go and get one. It's free for all new Novians. Yeah, Close obviously. The map window. It's uh, it's infested. That moon is infested. Okay, let's close that. Notice how the Sanctuary Twin Moon is now identified by the waypoint in the sky. There is a shuttle service, which <laughs> we will introduce at the end of this tutorial, that can bring you there. Good. Now, let's get your Sanctuary Territory Unit. I'd sooner Simply go to... follow the waypoint to the nearby dispenser and activate it. I'd sooner go to another moon or planet. Right, where... Um... Where's the next waypoint? Greeny. Where are you, Greeny? Uh, fiddlesticks. I think it's down, actually. Did I jump with a gun? I think I did, didn't I? Dum dummy dum. Oh, hell, hell's bells. Oh, what she say? Now let's get some your sanctuary territory unit. Simply follow the waypoint to the nearby dispenser. Yes, so I've got to go back up. Done this once before. You'd think I'd remember. <laughs> okay, here we go. F. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now that you're equipped with your territory unit, let's get back to the rest of the tutorial. Fantastic. Head down via the nearby elevators. Now is the time to present the key pillar activities that are available for Novians. Each of these will be presented here quickly, and you will later be able to discover more about them via the Institutes and their dedicated tutorials. Let's head to the mining station first. Follow the waypoint towards the downstairs there it platform. Is. Da, 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 da. Mining is one of the primary activities. This is how you acquire raw materials, if you don't simply buy them on the markets. Those materials are located either on the planet's surface, or they can be buried kilometers deep underground. Surface materials have a low value, while more valuable materials, from level 1 to level 5, are found deeper. As is often the case, to access the surface mining activity, you will need a tool. Here is the harvest tool, which is highlighted in the toolbar below. Pointing at harvestable elements on the surface and clicking on them, while the harvest tool is equipped, will allow you to collect them. Press the quick access key for this tool to equip it, usually the first in the toolbar, but it can be number any one. number corresponding to the equipped slot number. Number one. Great. Unfortunately, there are no surface harvestable elements here, so you will need to go through the dedicated tutorial in the Mining Institute to practice. Now, unequip this tool, but to begin mining deep underground, you will need a way to scan for available materials in a large radius. This is the job of the scanner tool, highlighted here. 
Once in close range, the directional detector will help you pinpoint the location of the material. Finally, to collect the found material, or simply to dig your way down, you will use the mining tool, highlighted just below. They all look alike. You'll learn more about this in the interactive mining tutorial, located inside the Mining Institute. Now, let's talk about the markets. Get close to the waypoint. Markets are an essential part of Novian life. This is where you can sell the materials you mine, but also buy anything that you might need. Markets are physically located in the world. They are accessible either via market pod units, like the one in front of you, or via the integrated nanomarket interface. The nanomarket interface allows you to browse markets at a distance, but cannot help you to deposit or recover items that are traded. For that, you will need to directly interact with a market pod. Very quickly, let's have a look at what the nanomarket interface looks like. To open it, press the nanomarket key. Nanomarket kit key is J. You can search for a particular item that you would like to trade by using these search boxes. Nitron is a fuel you will often use and frequently buy. Type Nitron in the search box to get access to the Nitron market. You can see the market orders for Nitron. These are all the intentions to buy or sell Nitron, by other Novians, on various markets in the solar system. You can pick the cheapest, or the nearest offer, depending on your priorities. You can also create your own buy or sell orders, or let the system pick the best offer for you. We will look into this at the end of this tutorial when we will buy Nitron for your speeder vehicle. For now, let's close the nanomarket interface and continue our visit. Okay, okay, let's now have a look at another important activity, industry. Go to the industry station, just a few meters on the left. In front of you is an assembly line, one of the many industry unit elements available, which includes things like chemical reactors, glass furnaces, refineries, or smelters. Each industry unit type is specialized through certain types of recipes. The assembly line can take ingredients in an entry container, like the one here on the left, and then run a recipe to craft elements. The elements are stored in the exit container, as seen here on the right, that can be chained as an entry container for another industry unit. To select the recipe, there is an industry unit interface that you will learn about in the dedicated industry tutorial inside the Industry Institute. Thankfully, entry-level recipes for simple products can be run without an industry unit. For that, you can use your integrated NanoCrafter. Before we open the NanoCrafter, let's get some ingredients we will need from the nearby dispenser. Approach the dispenser and press the Activate key. Excellent! Now, let's open the NanoCrafter by pressing the NanoCrafter key. We are going to craft some fuel. NanoCrafter key. Great. This interface allows you to pick a recipe and run it in the background to produce simple products. On the left is a selection area to pick a recipe. You currently have just a few ingredients, which allow a limited set of recipes to be used. Press the Show Only Doable checkbox to display these recipes. Excellent! Now, let's click on Nitron Fuel to select the corresponding recipe. Nitron... Uh, where? Pure... Nitron Fuel? Where? I think because I've done this already, it's not on here. Fiddlesticks. Nitron the panel fuel. that appeared shows you the necessary ingredients, 
which you just retrieved from the dispenser. It also offers the possibility to add this crafting job to the queue. Simply click on add to queue to start producing a batch of 100 liters of nitron fuel. Okay, will this work? <laughs> Fantastic. As you can see, your That's job lucky. is now in the queue and you will have a batch of nitron ready in a few seconds. That will be all for this short introduction. Thank you. There is of course more to know, and you can <laughs> go to the Industry Institute to go through the specialized tutorials. For now, let's close this window. In general, crafting jobs will continue in the background, and you will get notifications when jobs are completed. Coolio. Okay, now let's learn about building, and how you can use all these materials and elements to create amazing constructs. Just turn to the station on your right. This bizarre construction in front of you is called a construct. It is a mix of deployed voxel materials used to sculpt a shape and deployed elements to make it functional. The Freaky. first element you deploy to create a construct is a core unit, as highlighted here. It will create a building zone, within which you will be allowed core to build. Unit, just like core an units Imperium. come in different sizes, and also specializations, Static core units are for ground buildings, dynamic core units are for ships or anything that moves, and space core unit are for space stations. Once you have created your building zone, you can start to deploy matter, as voxel honeycomb materials, or voxels for short. You have a large palette of tools and materials to help you sculpt absolutely anything you like, regardless of shape or complexity. Finally, you can add elements to your construct, in the form of engines, doors, lights, fuel tanks, or any of the hundreds of available elements that provide functionality to your builds. Building is a vast subject. It is advised to go through the various building tutorials located inside the Building Institute. Note that the building you are currently in, as well as all the other buildings outside, are entirely made with the same building tools. Also, some of the cool constructs you can build not only include static buildings, but also space or atmospheric ships. Let's have a look at this now. Follow the waypoint to the next station. Ooh. Spaceship. This oh. is a surface speeder. Okay. A very basic surface ground speeder. atmospheric vehicle that is both convenient and cheap to build, and allows you to move around planet surfaces. You'll be gifted one at the end of this tutorial. Nice. Everything in this speeder is functional and plays a role in making it work. Let's quickly review the different elements that it's composed of. Here are the hover engines, which help the speeder float above the ground. These extra small atmospheric engines are used for propulsion and moving forward. They require fuel, taken from this atmospheric fuel tank. Adjusters are small elements used to create rotational forces and help balance your ship. You also need brakes to be able to slow down. And finally, you need a piloting seat to be able to fly it. Activating this piloting seat activates the ship, which is how you take control of it. All these elements are orchestrated via a Lua script that is generated automatically for you. But you can also modify it via a right-click menu on the piloting That's, seat it's to very create cool. absolutely any kind of control you like. Program yourself. Note that piloting in the atmosphere of a planet or in outer space can be very different, and involves different types of engines and design. Gravity may ground you if you have a heavy cargo on a high-gravity planet, while it won't matter in the darkness of space. In Dual Universe, piloting is an art, a subtle interplay between your piloting skills and the craftsmanship of the ship designer. You can learn more about piloting in the dedicated tutorials in the Piloting Institute. Piloting is not only about navigating your ship, but will often also involve combat. Look up at the fighter above your head. I've highlighted the weapons that are equipped on this small ship. There are many more types of weapons, ammunition, Ooh. and damage types. Each has a specific role. This is a small fighter, but you can also build giant battleships with a crew of hundreds of people, each assigned to a particular task. There is much more to discover about combat, 
so you should definitely visit the military institute to know more. Now, let's go to the last station and learn about organizations. Okie dokie. The waypoint. Organizations are a fundamental part of your social life as a Novian. They are groups that you can join, covering things like nations, corporations, alliances, or even group of pirates. Let's have a quick look at the organization interface. Open it by pressing the organization key. F3. As you can expect, you are not part of any organization yet. Let's click the search button to find out what are the currently exist. You can search through this list, focusing on open organizations, which are recruiting or sorting by member numbers, name or language. To apply for an organization, you need to open its details page. Click on the name of any of the listed organizations to open its details page. Rambo Alliance, that sounds cool. In this window, you can see a summary of relevant information regarding First this blood. organization. This area will allow you to apply to join this organization, along with a place to write a quick introduction to go along with it. Joining an organization can be a considerable boost for your new life as a Novian. Choose wisely. You can now close the detail window. Blow shit up. <laughs> Sounds good. You can, of course, also decide to create your organization from scratch, even if this is a little bit more advanced. For example, managing an organization involves legates and members, rules, voting, and management of rights. This is something you will discover later. You can now close the organization interface. Excellent. You have covered the basics. Now, let's move to the next step and talk about talents. Follow the waypoint. Cool. To start with, let's open the talent window by pressing the talent key. Which is F2. Talents define your character abilities. They are grouped into categories that are displayed all around your avatar in this window. Here, for example, is the Mining and Inventory group. Click on it. Excellent. Now, look on the left at the list of categories that correspond to this group. Each category hosts several talents. Click on the Inventory Manager category. Finally, Select the Nanopack Upgrades talent that just appeared under Inventory Manager. Very good. Talents can be upgraded from level 1 up to level 5, by spending talent points, in increasing quantities. Each level acquired provides a boost to a certain characteristic, described just below its name. For example, here the Nanopack Upgrades helps to increase the size of the inventory by 200 liters for each talent level acquired. The amount of talent points you currently have, is displayed in the upper part of the screen. Talent points automatically accumulate, even when you are offline, at a slow rate, shown here. To consume points to instantly train a particular talent, you could simply use the invest points button I just highlighted, assuming you have enough points for the talent you are aiming for. Most of the time, you have very little accumulated points, because the rate of accumulation is slow. Instead, you can decide to queue a talent, and enter an active learning phase, which considerably boosts the talent point acquisition rate. Let's train the first level of the nanopack upgrades talent, press the queue talent button. Press the queue talent button. I'm confused. Oh, I've already done this, haven't I? But, uh, okay, cute, um, was it that? No. Nanopack upgrades, talent mastered. Oh, is it gonna let me do this? Okay, I've already done this, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna queue something else up. Already done what she said. 
So I'm going to do something mining related. Uh, let's see. Mining range. What's that do? Plus 20% mining tool range. Advanced mining. Plus 5% max mining sphere size. Mining optimization. Plus 5% time to mining tool max sphere. Hmm. Got anything else here? That's already mastered. Container proficiency. Plus ten percent storage volume. I think I'm good on storage. Don't need any more of that. Nano pack optimization. Don't really know what everything means. Let's stick with the mining terraformer. Terraforming speed. 10% terraforming operation speed. I think the main thing I'm going to be doing, I could be doing that. Equipment. What about equipment? Refuel tool efficiency. 20% refuel. Maneuver tool optimization. Plus 10% maneuver tool range. Repair tool efficiency. 10% repair tool speed. Could be good. Repair tool optimization, 5% of repair tool health regen. Sounds like a, an important thing. I might go for that. I mean, mining's definitely going to be something I want. Mining range, plus 20% mining tool range. Should we go for that? Let's do it. If I as you can Language see, Timothy. the selected talent now displays in the queue. You can queue several talents to train one after the other. Note that dependencies between talents might exist, and you should train talents in the right order. See how the acquisition rate is much faster during active learning, when a talent is in a queue. Acquired points are immediately assigned to the talent which is currently being trained. It is a good practice to always have several talents scheduled in the queue to be able to train them without interruption. Note that talents nice. also train when you are offline. So, make sure to always have a filled queue that spans a long duration. If the queue ends when you are not online, you will fall back to the slow talent point accumulation rate. Take your time to review the existing talents and think about how you want to plan them out. There is no rule of thumb here, you can become hyper-specialized, or decide to be a jack-of-all-trades. Mm -hmm. When you're ready, you can close the talent window. This is a very EVE Online, queuing stuff up. Okay, this is excellent. So, 5 minutes, 13 minutes, 66 minutes, 5 hours, 27 hours, 20 minutes for that. Well, that'll do. At this point, you might be confused by the vast number of interfaces and their various shortcuts. Thankfully, you don't have to remember all that. Let's enter into free mouse mode by pressing the free mouse key. Free mouse. Tab key. The menu on the left gathers all the quick accesses to the available interfaces. And since your mouse is now free, you can simply click on them. Note that you can oh, also okay. select the tools in your toolbar and generally interact with many more menus and options in this mode. One example is the notification icon in the lower right part of the screen, which you can now access. Now, she now said it's free. also a good time to learn about the Codex, which is a global written tutorial about everything you need to know. It can be spawned with the Codex key, but you also have access to the windowed Codex, that creates a window you can resize and move. Click on the windowed Codex button. She said free mouse. I thought she said free mess. So that enables you to use the mouse. Okay, codex. You can browse the many topics in the selection Wiki. here. Normally when you leave the free mouse mode, temporary windows are closed, but not the windowed codex. So it can be helpful to pin some help content on the side while you are performing the actions described in it. For now, we are going to close this window, 
as we will need the screen space for the remainder of this tutorial. Cool. Simply click again on the windowed codex menu. That's extremely useful, this codex. As we are talking about help, let me mention hints. Hints will appear regularly on the right of the screen, depending on your actions, to give you some help. I've triggered a hint for you right now. You can review them later from the hint window, or simply by pressing the hint key, so you will never miss one. Okay. okay. <laughs> you can now close the free mouse mode and return to the 3D view. Now, it's time Tab. to discover a really fun oh, activity damn. that is available to you right from the start. Let's go through the large exits, down the stairs, to the waypoint. Okie dokily. Uh, not that way. I think I may have gone the wrong way. It's supposed to be on the other side. Welcome to the surrogate VR stations. These stations can be used to enter a VR session to control a remote robot in telepresence. This is a fantastic way to discover locations and familiarize yourself with the possibilities offered to you, perhaps even visit a large organization headquarters, or simply play tourist in extraordinary places. You first enter into a VR stations like this one by activating it. You can then select the destination site, among those that are public and are made accessible to you. You take control of a robot that awaits in a distant pod. Anyone can deploy a pod in their construct and make it public, so that visitors can arrive. As a robot, your capacities are limited however, so this is just a way to visit an area remotely, as opposed to teleporting there directly. These are fake stations, you cannot use them. But I will show you the real one on the way out, a bit later. One last thing, you may have noticed those buttons with a question mark on them. They are info buttons. They are placed in front of points of interest and you can press on them to display an informational message. Try it now, and activate this button. F. Uh, activate. Alright, okay. Surrogate to VR station. Oh, I did this the first time round. She actually wants me to click on this one. Oops. F. Great. Info buttons close themselves automatically, but you can also force them out with the cancel key. Another powerful way to discover things by yourself in dual universe is to use the helper system. Simply point at anything in the world, or in the user interface, and press the helper key. Try it now on something in the world around you. Okay, so the helper key is H. Uh, should we try on this one? H. Good, let's continue. The next important thing to learn about is the notion of rights. Everything you own can be shared with others, but it is by default only accessible to you. For example, try to deactivate the highlighted force field on the left. You can do it by pointing at it and pressing the interaction key and see what happens. You received an action forbidden message, telling you that the owner of this element did not share it with you. This is actually how you can make your construct secure against intruders. Now, in nice. the same way, try to activate the left button, that controls the light above. Again, the right to activate has not been given to you. Do not have permission. Now instead, try to activate the button on the right. I have, as you can see, this time it worked. You can control the light by pressing this button. To set up an element's rights in a simple way, you can use the right-click menu on an element that you own. Try it on the button in front of you. Oops. <laughs> Here, you can access the share element or share construct options in the construct submenu, which will allow you to grant rights to others. 
You can now close this menu by pressing the escape key or simply by clicking outside of it. A much more complex system is available for advanced management that allows for fine-tuned rights control, in particular for organizations. You can share whole constructs, manage specific types of rights, and create groups of people with certain abilities. But this is way beyond the scope of this introduction. You should try the rights management tutorial instead. Now, simply deactivate the force field on your right by pointing at it and pressing the interaction key. F. Don't worry, I have given you the proper rights. Very good. Now, let's continue our visit and go down to the lower level, using the elevator at the end of the room. On both sides of this corridor, you will find resurrection nodes. Drawing on the consequences of the Everett interpretation of quantum mechanics, we were able to design a technology, which preserves your state of consciousness across multiple realities. We control the multiverse, in order to branch you onto a version of reality where you happen to respawn, here on one of these platforms, whenever you die. So, you cannot really die, there is always a version of the universe in the multiverse where you wake up Very Star Wars galaxies. Beware that when you die, your inventory will not be preserved, so don't take death too lightly. It's important to know that you can craft or buy your own resurrection nodes. You can then install them in your ship or in your home. When respawning, you will always appear at the nearest active resurrection node, so in general you don't have to always get back to this <laughs> room. The name bollocks. <laughs> All right, so we are now almost ready to exit the starting hub. The last step is about collecting components to allow you to build a speeder ground vehicle. Follow the waypoint in the direction of the exit. Race a blueprint. On both speeder sides of this blueprint. room are demonstration versions of two of the most popular UEF hovercraft speeders. These ground vehicles are extremely efficient to quickly navigate the surface of a planet, and you will need one during the first steps of your journey. Distances are real, and transportation is a necessity. One way to acquire these speeders is to get a blueprint and to run it. Each of the highlighted dispenser will grant you the blueprint of the speeder next to them. Go get one of them by activating the dispenser. You can pick the one you prefer, or take them both. As I said, I actually got both of them. The, the uh, speeder and the racer. Obviously you only get the parts for one though. But um, you can just click on both of them and get uh, the blueprint. F. To run a blueprint, you can simply double click get on the other one if you want. in your inventory to deploy it into the world. You will be guided by the ghost bounding box that will appear. We will do that later. Another requirement to be able to deploy a blueprint is that you possess all its necessary components, materials and elements. The dispenser in front of you contains everything needed to be able to deploy one speeder. Go to the dispenser and activate it. Oh, I also squeezed in a resurrection node that will prove very useful soon. I've already got these, but I have to do this to complete, to continue. So you go F to now, get it. Now, don't deploy your blueprint right away. You may need to do that, that later on the Sanctuary Moon. But keep it in your inventory. It will soon come handy. Blueprints can also be created by you. When That being said, oh. this concludes the starting hub portion. And blueprints can, prints can also... You. This room is also a sort of small museum Oops. showing many elements and materials that you may want to learn about. Simply press on the info buttons, or use the helper key to know more about each element on display. When you are finished, you can exit through the front door, which is now open. Now you can create blueprints by um, from uh, components that you've created, or vehicles or whatever. You just uh, you just create it from from the the existing device, right? Next Welcome thing. to the outside world. In front of you is a large parking area where many ships come and go, mostly to get to the nearby market. 
Let's actually go on the other side, where we will find the market and the institutes. Follow the waypoint ahead of you. You can run by pressing the run modifier, but you can also sprint at great speed by hovering above the ground thanks to your jetpack. Simply double tap the forward key. Try it, very good. Now, let's walk to the Whee! other side of the parking oh, lot. God damn. You stuck that there. Damn gits. Double tap W. Whee! <laughs> Whoa! Stop. Great, we are now at the district's market. Let's actually use it to buy a bit more fuel for our speeder. Head towards the waypoint and activate a market pod. Okay. Oh, this is a lot busier than it was earlier when I first did the uh, tutorial. Alright. Double W. This market pod interface is very similar to the nano market interface we have already seen. There are however some key differences, which we will get to shortly. For now, let's search for Nitron Fuel by typing Nitron in the upper search box. Nitron. Here again, you can see the different market orders for Nitron Fuel, with the current market's name appearing in orange. Since there are sell orders on this market for Nitron, you will be able to go through the simplified Instant Buy option. Instant Buy will pick the best offer on the market where you currently are, and is a very good method for beginners to easily buy something. Simply click on the local Instant Buy button to start buying Nitron. Okay. Now, enter a quantity here, like 10 liters. Keep an eye on the proposed price to compare it to the average regional prices and avoid potential price gouges. Confirm. Is that it? Come on, lady. Now enter quantity here, like 10 liters. Liters, L-I-T-E-R-S. I thought it was R-E-S, isn't it? <laughs> Keep an eye on the proposed price to compare. I've just bought some. I don't want to buy it. Do I want to buy more? I probably need to use it. Current balance, 199. Mm, buy some more. Let's open up a specific market. I think I've confused her. Nitron fuel.
Okay, I've done this part. It's bought the fuel. It's not going on, so I think we can skip objective. So it should take us on to the next bit. Page up, page down. So presumably a skip. Page, shift, shift and page down. Skip. When you are ready, simply confirm your purchase with the confirm button. Skip. Congratulations. Okay. You just acquired Nitron. I have. However, Many it times. will not go directly into your inventory. Instead, like anything you buy on a given market, it is stored inside the market container, waiting for you. Let's open this market container by selecting the corresponding tab. On the left side is your current inventory. On the right side is the market container's contents. Here you can see the Nitron you just purchased. Note that if you want to put a sell order on something, you can simply drag and drop it from your inventory to the market container. A quicker option is to use the local instant sell window that will try to get you the best price on offer on the local market. Right click instant sell. Now to receive your fuel, simply drag and drop the Nitron from the market container to your inventory. Great. You are now an accomplished trader. Nice. When you are ready, you can close the market interface by clicking on the highlighted button. Before we go to the Institute Plaza, let's have a look at the connected surrogate VR station, just behind you. Follow the indicated waypoint. Just behind me, oh yeah, over there. Let's run. Shift W. I invite you to come back here at the end of this tutorial and activate any of these surrogate VR stations. You will be presented with a list of incredible sites to visit anywhere in Dual Universe through a remote controlled robot. You can sort them by the number of recent visitors to see the most popular first. This is a great way to discover what is possible in Dual Universe. Let's now go in the direction of the plaza but follow the waypoint to the district teleporters first. Okay. Which way? Over there. Okay, let's speed this. Whee. In front of you are teleporters that grant you instant access to any of the 10 districts that are placed around the Ark ship. Each of these districts is identical to the one you are currently in, but Novians will start their journey in any one of them at random. You can use these teleporters to quickly reach for a particular market, or to meet with friends on another district. Now, let's follow the waypoint to one of the most important place of this district, the Institute Plaza, just at the top of the stairs. Okay. Oops. In front of you is a map of the plaza, with the different institutes around. There is an institute for each core activity. Go and visit them after we are done. They are I fantastic will. ways to discover the many possibilities that are offered to you. Also, each of them hosts teleporters to interactive tutorials for activities like mining, piloting, building, market operations, industry, etc. Note that this district is not unique. As we saw just before, there are 10 similar districts spread in close proximity to the Ark ship. We have visited the teleporters available between them and available near the market for convenience. Each Aliath district is also paired with a similar district on the Sanctuary Twin Moon. So, you will find plenty of opportunities to get back to the institutes and tutorials wherever you are. Finally, let's get to the last step of our introduction the Twin Moon Shuttle Service. Follow hmm. the waypoint. The last part. That map's useful. I will look around once we're done here, which we nearly are. Shuttle wall. Now, make a left turn and follow the waypoint again. Okie dokie, whoops. Cool.
Ooh, we're getting s strong Star Wars Galaxies vibes here. Here we are. In front of you is a button that you will be able to use to call for a free Sanctuary Moon Shuttle service. This shuttle will connect you to a similar district on the Sanctuary Twin Moon. Very I will cool. guide you to get there as soon as this introduction is over, and claim a tile for yourself, using the Sanctuary Territory unit you collected earlier. Let's take a look at the shuttle, which is on your right. Yeah, I want to get to another planet. You know, that, that Sanctuary is, looks uh, jam-packed. Yeah, it is. There's the shuttle. At tricky this stage, you may not want to deploy oh, your speeder that. blueprint. If you do it here, on Alioth, you will have to dismantle it before you can pocket it and eventually redeploy it again on the Sanctuary Twin Moon. To learn how to dismantle a speeder, you should go to the building tutorial in the Building Institute. You should rather keep your blueprint ready to deploy when you are on the Sanctuary Twin Moon, where you will undoubtedly need it to travel to a free tile before claiming it. Remember, to deploy your speeder blueprint, simply double-click on it in your inventory. Alright, that's it. You should now be prepared for the incredible adventure ahead of you. I will always be near you to help if you need. Remember to visit the tutorials, discover the beauty of the world with surrogate stations, and learn more about Dual Universe via the Codex and the Institutes. I will do. Mm, just one more thing. I'll put some broad objectives for you in the upper left of the screen. Nice. These are suggestions of milestones to follow to properly build up your experience in Dual Universe, and they are very much recommended. Feel free to follow these at any time you feel ready, or to bypass them entirely. Check the objectives section of the map for more details on how to complete these objectives. From now on, I'll be much less directive with you on how to do things. The first of these milestones is for you to reach the Sanctuary Twin Moon. You can use the shuttle service right next to you. Safe travel, Novian. I'll see you there. Cool. I don't think I'm going to be staying there for too long. We shall see. Hopefully I can get somewhere else. Anyway, that's it for the beginner tutorial. I'll, um in this and upload it. I'll go and do those other tutorials here as well, I think. Might be useful. Actually, redoing really this one has been very useful. Pretty cool. So the cock-up was good. <laughs> Messing up that recording. Paid off. Let's hope this recording's worked. Anyway, I hope that was useful, and thank you for watching.